I want to give a huge shout out to Tom Box and Embassy TV for this awesome video. Tom's the GOAT, bro. Tom is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineer, baby! It's all the awesome designs. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. So make sure you go subscribe to MST.TV down in the description below. Lestros. The Lestros launch has been a huge success. We have raised an absurd amount of money. This is amazing. If you guys want to get involved in, kick in the Kickstarter of Lestros, so you guys can get your Lestros starter decks, Founders Edition, before it's too late, make sure to go click the link below. This game has potential to be the new greatest TCG in the entire world. I'm excited for it. Make sure to check out the link below, and I'll see you guys in this video. Let's go. From the highest peaks to the darkest forest and the deepest oceans, discover the enchanted mythical creatures known as Elestrals. Wield the power of the gods and elemental spirits. Clash for victory. Ascend to immortality. Elestrals Card Game, available now on Kickstarter. YouTube, today's video, I partner with MST TV Tom Box. Tom Box. And we are going to give to you guys the ultimate goal first guide in the entire meta. So if you guys are meta players, make sure to stay tuned for this video. It is going to be absolutely epic. And make sure to go on MST.TV to check out, not just, this is the second part of the series, baby. So you can check out the hand trap guide. And very soon is going to be the go second guide. Tom, what do you think about this amazing counter guide? No, oh, this is going to be the best one. This is going to help you break it down for, especially for you guys who are new players coming into the format. Oh man, it's just like oh, you you look so fun. Want to come back? Oh, you played masters now. You want to play the real thing? Well, you probably need to learn this stuff because this format I don't think is the noob friendliest at all. I mean, people love it. People love it because it's very interactive. I'll give them that. But it's definitely not, like, new player friendly at all. Especially from two people with PhDDs. Yeah, double Professors <laughs> Honors of Dueling. Is that yeah. what it stands for? Sure, stands why for, not? Right? That's exactly what it stands for. The, uh, the second D is silent. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So, let's get started in this video. Before we do, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Go to Tom's channel and subscribe to MSC TV as well. Once you do both of those, once you subscribe to both channels... We can begin! So, first things first, we got Tier Limit Ashizu. Tom, do we play different dimension ground against Tier Limit Ashizu? Absolutely. Why yes, if you, you do, if you if you have DDG in your side deck, and you opt to not play it against Tier Limit Ashizu, do me a favor and go play Master Duel. This card <laughs> is absurd against this. So, with the going first guide, here's the thing. So, before we continue, I want you to take in this knowledge over here. Alright, everyone listen up closely. All these his cards, they're blowouts. But they're only blowouts for some decks. Do not side deck a Cosmic Cyclone going first. I mean, if it's there in your side deck already and is better than a Veiler, sure. But the idea of side decking going first is that they better win you the duel. They bet if they're possibly, if they're searchable, that'll be amazing. But they have to win you the duel. Don't play like random nonsense. So we're going to tell you guys right now how good these are. I'm going to go scroll down for the next few. And so Artifact Sanctum, amazing. Amazing, Gristilum and Shizu, especially if you have a way to search it. For example, if you're playing a sprite deck, a Dagda, whatever, if you could pop it with whatever. Zombie World, I would say no. What do you think? Zombie World isn't like it's a not blowout. Bad. It's not yeah, bad. If yeah. you stop their Kalos thing, Kikalos, which, yeah. is, which is pretty big. It's not like they're going to have a Tornado Dragon to pop this card. Yeah. It's, uh, I would say all the tier cards get pretty like muffled. Because of a zombie yeah. world, like without no kit, a, without a kit start, it's like pretty bad for them. Like they don't have ideal starts. They might go into Baguska just to stun you a little. Maybe they're gonna try to dig into like game two. You can expect people like, hey, they might be expecting you to go Mystic Mine or something like that. They might put a, they might actually put a heartbeat in there and spin it away. So it's decent, but you also gotta keep in mind that it's not going to like win you the game single handedly. You can get it for free. For example, if you're playing any deck that has... There's a lot of cards that search field spells, such as Majesty Maiden, pen best deck, Draco Slayer. Mm -hmm. You go Ignister, Effect Maiden, Special, add any field spell. At that point, I mean, you'd rather search Necro Valley. But if you already have it and it's free, you might as well. Speaking of Necro Valley, definitely play Necro Valley, especially if it's searchable. If you, if it's searchable via Ignister, if it's searchable via... Let's say you play a Tailman deck with the Crystal uh, Rainbow Bridge... If you have any uh, terraforming set rotation, if you have some form of way to search Necro Valley, just fuck, at least play one and search it. It's a game changer. Mind if I right. cut in here? Yeah, 100%, so, 100%. For, so for Necro Valley, you know sprites, if you're playing Mannequin Cat, you know you yeah. could, uh, you know, if they, if they have a dark, you can summon the end of Anubis, which 
kind of functions the same way because yeah. uh, all graveyard effects are negated. Uh, all anything that activates in the graveyard is negated, and anything that would target a card in the graveyard is also negated, which kind of shuts off um the entire graveyard. Shizu stuff and tier stuff both get shut down thanks to the end of noobs, and it's like twenty five hundred beatstick. It's, it's not small. Yeah, dude, that's huge. Yeah, if you guys have access to mannequin cat, aka uh, if you have sprite sprints and angler, or if you're playing sprite, any form of that in your deck. Throw an end of Anubis. Seriously, Mannequin Cat is insane. Is criminally underrated. I think Mannequin Cat, Cat especially in Sp if you're not playing Mannequin Cat in Sprite decks, you're just you're like it's like Electrum is legal and you're not playing Electrum. Yeah, and uh, you can also summon the Turtle if you don't want to go that way. Yeah, exactly. The eighteen hundred defense that one also works out as well. But I think the end of Anubis is a great call because yeah, it's yeah, also sorry. dark. Yeah, but they're I both did, great. I mean, yeah. they're both great. Yeah, sorry, I uh, didn't mean to cut in, but you know, oh, the end no, of Anubis no, no. and Necro Dude, Valley, was, very yeah, similar effects. Hundred percent. Very 100%. similar. That's, that's a factual. Uh, what do you think of Rivalry and Gozen? Gozen's kind of, eh, it's okay. I mean, they could probably work around it. Rivalry could actually hurt them a, a little bit. Uh, they, they You kind of lock them into Aqua, and some of their bosses aren't, um, well, they're not, <laughs> they're not, not Aqua. <laughs> Did I say that right? Whatever it is, basically, Rivalry can actually shut them out from like getting all the other lines from like the Sprite Elf stuff, Garura. They're really locked into a really small package in their extra deck, and uh, that doesn't really fare very well for them. And if they put Ishizu stuff on the board first, they're not going into anything. <laughs> they're kind of stuck. Yeah, I think it's a good point there. Like it's def it's good. It's not bad, but I mean, it, all these six cards are good in some regard. What I would really focus on is cards like DDG, Sanctum, and Necro Valley because they're literally like just GG, it's over. Uh, so Robert, it's good, but like if you're playing go first card, you might as well play one of the others, especially because they're way more searchable. Uh, uh, so now I'm for D Barrier. Uh, you have to think of what deck they're playing. If your deck, let's say, hard loses to Baguska, they're still going to end on Baguska. But if your deck does not care about Baguska, D Barrier is a turn change, it's a turn ender because they could still do stuff. They go dark, they go Baguska. But if your deck doesn't care about it, like if you play Cerberus or you just play a lot of links in your deck, then D Barrier becomes absurd. Uh, but at the same time, it's not searchable. So this, this is why cards like Necro Valley, I think, are way better. It, depending on your deck, if there, none of them, if you have any terraforming your set rotation or any way to search your field spell, like if you're playing Draco Slayers with Maiden, if you're, like I said, those are just in general better because they're searchable. But if or if you're playing Griffin, you, I mean, you're probably setting DDG. But DDG D Barrier, yeah, they do the job. But again, just make sure that they will go Baguska if this is the case. So make sure you deck it out of Baguska. Yeah, you need to follow up for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you, you like you can have the perfect card, skip the turn. But if you can't win, you're skipping yeah. your turn back. So yeah, exactly. Uh, just got you just uh, gotta keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. As for Sprite, I say DDG is not good. Like it's going first. So like like it's not useless. But if it, if for, for if this is a go first versus go second power value, we have to be a little uh, hand. We have to give a handicap a little bit. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. like if it's going second, it be, it it could be even kind of shit. But if it stops their turn a bit, it's not bad. But if it's going first, now I have to give a handicap. I mean, it, it better be like a turn changer. So I would say DDG is not worth even playing against Sprite for that purpose. But at the same time, would it be better than a effect Veiler? Maybe I don't know. Maybe I mean, if we're substituting for a Coral, why not? But I'm still putting no. I would put like this. If you yeah, that's to. good. If that's you good. have to, exactly. if you have to, and exactly. like, you can get rid of like, some of the trashier cards exactly. and do it. Like if we're choosing DDG or Skullmeister, then I mean, obviously DDG, DDG or DDG or Crow. Like then in that case, yeah. As for Sanctum, yeah, Sanctum is a uh, is an absolute <laughs> turn, turn skipper. <laughs> it's really good, especially when they can't actually reach their their end board. Like, oh yeah. The thing about like both Tears Cheezer and Sprite and Shuria is that they don't just play one single type of extra deck monster they do flex into the different lines which is why like d barrier is so weird like oh i can hit them with d barrier they can't fuse yeah but they're going to skip your turn with uh with other cards so you, mm -hmm. you're not you're not exactly in the clear sprite with zombie world thoughts it's kind of yeah. useless it's really bad yeah. <laughs> i don't yeah. think it actually does anything to be honest yeah. like they don't care or they're thunder because they're thunder but they don't like just because they're thunder doesn't really matter but if you can rivalry lock them under, mm, then that then that's good. Then that's good because they don't have any they don't have any follow up for that. That's, that actually killed them. But just remember, floodgate and sprite they have they have smashers. They will smash anything off the board that becomes a problem. And if you're talking about like games two, some people side in an extra smasher. I've seen that, but they will also oh, yeah. have feather duster. We're looking at twin twisters. 
like guys, I'm expecting more sprite players to be using twin twisters as a counter side to this, mainly just because they can throw nimble uh, angler into the graveyard with the twin twister and they profit off of that. So they'll pop yeah. two cards and summon two cards. Yo, who doesn't want to pop two summon two? That's like that's like that's the that's how you play Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, uh, I would I would say Necro Valley's a no. It's a no. Okay. Yeah. How, wh- but, how, why? Like they do have follow. I think they have a summon but, more- like. The reason okay. why is it's just so elf. Necro Valley. It, it does stop Elf, which is which is definitely huge. Like in retrospect, in a vacuum, if you just say this card stops Elf, oh, okay. oh yeah, like the card's amazing in that regard. However, a card like Necro Valley is not a card like DDG that only like I mean DDG does stop you, but it's only one turn. Or Sanctum is just the opponent one turn, but Necro Valley also stops you. So Necro Valley, like if your deck does not care about Necro Valley, oh throw that shit in there. Throw that shit in there. But However, like there, there, there is more value to the Necro Valley. Though. It stops Smashers as well. They can't banish from the graveyard to activate Smashers. I think so. If we're going first, I don't think I'm siding for Smashers. I get what you mean. Like it's definitely there's impact. Uh, there's impact. Yeah, like there is impact. I, I think it's extremely dependent on the deck you're playing. Like if you're playing a deck. That also Necro Valley also hurts. I wouldn't play it. Let's okay. say you're even if you're playing. Let's say you're playing Tier Limit or Sprite. Those are the two most played decks, right? I would yeah. not side deck Necro Valley in the mirror match because it'll hurt you just as much, if not more, because it would hurt the it would hurt whoever is going first more. But if you're playing a deck, a Flunder can't play it either because you want your actual field spell to be there. So yeah, yeah. if you're playing some rogue deck that truly does not care. Let's say you're playing Pendulums, which is the all by the way, tier zero billion best deck. Then if it's searchable for free, why not? But at that point, if it's searchable, I'd probably rather search something better. Okay. And rivalry and goes in, I would say uh they could still do some stuff, but I still like I would definitely I play would it against say them. the best one against them is more like there can be only one rather than oh, the yeah. issue. Because like yeah. all of your like key monsters, aside from like elf, elf and gigantic, all of your biggest hitters and like, your biggest utility. They're not Thunder. So locking someone into... Well, locking them into Thunder shuts them off. But also, there can be only one. You can't put up the second Thunder on the board to actually make those other monsters. So you're kind of stuck either way. Both ways, mm-hmm. you're stuck. Because you're, you're relying on a second level too. But they do have ways to out this card. Depending on how they want to play. I, I don't know if it's perfect. Gozen, I actually like Gozen a little bit more. Because you're stuck. Like If you're stuck under like fire... They have to trade away all their protection to make their board, making them super vulnerable to whatever follow-up you have, because they just can't. They can't have both the negate plus the uh, the thing that summons at the same time. They just don't get that anymore. So it uh, it really just... They're playing with one hand tied behind their back if you do have one of these flight gates up, which, you know, in some cases, is it, to me, is actually more than enough because they can't develop board. That's, that's the key thing. They can't develop. Yeah. yeah. And then as for Deep Barrier, I would say it's not bad. Uh, it stops Gigantic Sprite, of course. It's it's okay. It's not bad. It's definitely better than a Veiler, but it's definitely not like a turn skipper or something like that. Yeah, well, the but, moment you take away Gigantic I think... Yeah, okay, think about it this way. They have... There's also no Zeus, which is also really good. Yeah, no Zeus. I think you should always call Xyz. I, th- I think Xyz, like... Well, yeah. you can't call anything but Xyz. What am I talking about? You can't call Fusion. links on this. <laughs> you can't call anything. It's good to stop the Gigantic. It's good to stop the Zeus. Uh, I think it's important to know that if you stop Gigantic, it just literally means they don't get the free monster out of the deck, which means they're not going to Toad. There's no Toad either. Uh, there's no free deck summons. Like, if they're playing Aperia or, or other sorts of, like, techie monsters, or if they didn't start with Blue or Jet, they're starting with no name. Which means even if they get a bunch of bodies on the field, say they go into sprint, sprint, dump, angler, it still means that they don't have gigantic. So you could probably see an IP Mascarena and an elf. IP Mascarena elf. Because mm-hmm. there's no mannequin cat either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, that's also good. huge as well. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, definitely play that. All now right. for Flunder. Okay. This is what I'm gonna say. You guys ready? Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. X, 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 X. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh... Well, hold on, hold they... on, hold on, hold on. We didn't, we, we don't need to X one of those. 
Oh, zombie wolf. Oh, shit. How, how can we forget? Oh, my God. <laughs> we don't, yeah. we don't oh, need to fix that one. Oh, there yeah. you go. Oh, I this, fixed it. They, I fixed amazing. It. Thank I you. It. That was a, it. This is why we're the great combo. We're, we're peanut butter and Zo jelly, bro. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly. That that's perfect. right. That zombie perfect. world, they can't tribute at all. They, exactly. can't even use, they can't even use the continuous one because that's a, considered as a tribute summon. They can't tribute summon anything at all. Zombie they world die. Is, is the definition of, like, not just a turn skipper, but, like, continuous turn skipper. It's a game skipper. It's a game skipper. And the beauty of it is Zombie World is a field spell. And because of field spell, instantly more searchable. Terrible. Like, if, think of any deck you play. What's the most played deck? Tier Limit? You're playing Perlerino. Dude, what, what else is the best field spell in the game? Mystic Mind? You should be playing as three Perlerino, maybe even two, Mystic Mind, and then Terraforming Set Rotation in the main deck. The reason why is now, going second, you have three Mystic Mind, but only one. And instead of three Perlerino or four, you're playing five or five. And post side deck, you have a zombie world. So you have three, not one. Does that make sense? And you so can also like, mill like the, the, the banshee into the And then you can mill the banshee exactly. And the thing is you don't even have to care if the zombie world gets milled, because you can just the, use the Medora or oh, yeah, put it put back, back into the deck. Ah, that's so sick. <laughs> that's so dumb. That's especially, dude, especially in the locals that there's some locals out there that's like, let's say there's ten players out of locals. There's like five four tier limits, like two sprites, and like fucking three flunders. Some locals have a lot of Flunder players, you know? Like the classic Flunder. I don't know how these people generate fun from this, but my locals personally, though I go to Game Nation, there's 16 players typically at locals. There's like three, four Flunder players. So for that purpose, if you're playing at a local tournament and you know like all the players there and you know they're playing Flunder, you better find ways to get the Zombie World. I would side deck three Zombie World and fucking two Banshee. Okay, maybe not that much, but like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, if you, you see know it. that they're playing Flunder, it's very easy to beat that deck. Play a, a search field spell turbo deck. Yeah, GG. <laughs> and then you just one zombie world. See you later, pal. Yeah. GG. GG. So, Brian and Bistial, I ran through Flunder. Your turn. What do you think about Bistial? Bistial, very strong. DDG, it does have its purposes. Not exactly the, the all-win card, just because branded cards, they do play under banishing they don't really care too much if if i mean dude despia cards will still activate so it's good but it does shut off all the bestial cards which is why it's still here uh yeah. sanctum is an instant killer they do okay they're not dead dead because bestials have one thing going for them they're big and they're not gonna die and they play back row now because of the back row of like uh, regain they could have summoned back a lot of their stuff out of the graveyard which is why it's great that you don't have to deal with mere jade but you're still like uh dealing with like a lot of free pluses that they're getting and they get that free pop and whatever that comes out of the great druid swarm is still control so it's good i'm only gonna give this one a conditional one it's just not quite there zombie i don't even think does zombie world even do anything to them mm. i don't think it does do they need dragons a dragon names they have the tribute to dragon i guess it only shuts off like maybe it shuts off a card I don't think I would play this. I don't think I would. No, me either. It. But I probably would play Necro Valley against them, just yeah. because they can't summon oh, yeah. back their cards. Oh uh, yeah, they're they're cooked. No, this is, this is no, this is really good because like, even the branded stuff also gets like kind of gets clipped. Uh, Rivalry or Gozen? This is a very interesting one because like Bistios, they're not just dark; they're both dark and light. So because of the dark and light, the Gozen automatically gets some value that they can't Lubellion back their card because. All the level six dragons are all dark. Lubellion somehow is a light. If they're playing Cartesia, that's also a light. Like, there's a lot of cards that are just kind yeah, of you, shut off. You catch them at like the perfect time; they're cooked. Yeah, just be careful with it. You just you definitely need the right card. Like timing is key here. There, we'll put a word in here. Timing is key. Uh, Dimensional Berry is actually not that great. Their bodies are just too big, and if they're just playing control with regain and beast. You doing a D bear against them? Um, it, yeah. I guess you stop. It's like ashing them. It's really just like ashing them. Like if they play yeah. random fusion. You do yeah, this. Like they don't send. Yeah. Yeah. On, in the branded version, definitely just D barrier the stuff, and that's fine. But just be very wary that there's still fourteen bisted cards that you have to deal with. Yeah, because like the bestial stuff uh, aren't affected. Naturia DDG is a turn skipper, right? DDG is a turn skipper. It hurts them a well. The thing is, that only hits the monsters, which is still really big, but all the traps and whatever, right, traps and yeah. uh, spell cards, they still hit the grave, so they still get the yeah. searches. It is still a turn skipper. I'm not going to say, uh, like, 
I don't I wouldn't say that they're completely dead. Uh it's good. Uh but you know it's good, but you know, the uh sacred tree tree goes off. So they still get their follow up if they do mill their cards. Mm-hmm. But it hurts them because they have a lot of one ofs. If you hit the one ofs yeah. while they're milling, GG, GG. Uh, Sanctum is really good. Yeah, Sanctum is just is, again. This is like an extra deck base deck. They die. Yeah. Zombie World, they rely on nothing. They don't rely on anything here. They don't care too too much about typing. There are a couple of cards that do care, like Sacred Tree cares about like insects and insects and plants. It's 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 mediocre at best. I would say it's not worth running, and they don't do tree. It's somebody they don't play bamboo shoot. They don't care. Necro Valley is pretty. I have to think about this. Necro Valley, they mill cards into the grave. They don't care about that. Cards coming back from the graveyard. I don't think is it's as effective as it seems. You need to pair this with the second card to actually lock them out. Like locking out them out of the graveyard is good, but it's not the end all. Like, sure, they can't summon their cards back from the graveyard, but if they leave all their stuff on the field, you're still going to die. They have negation, uh, guaranteed right. negation. They have monster negation. They have spell trap negation. They have, like, Naturia Beast. They can make... Well, they can't make Trishula in this case, but it. I think it still hurts them because they can't go to Chen Ying. Chen Ying is pretty much just shut off, right, at this point. They can't just Mudora their stuff back. So, you know what? Nah, I'll, 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 I'll give it the check. I'll give it the check. It's, it's actually decent enough because it shuts off all of the power plays of the deck. Especially if it's searchable by a lot of people on my channel watching. You guys all play Draco Slayers. Even if you play any version of Pendulum, Beyond the Pendulum could search Maiden and just use Special Majesty and you search a Necro Valley. So it's like a free field spell. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. It's not bad. And to close out, Rivalry goes in. Thing is, they play Insects and Plants. Uh, kidding them with a rival. Like, it sucks. They can't even play Vistid Engines. If they're playing Fenrir, they're kind of stuck. But their out would be a Fenrir, though. If they did hard open Fenrir, they'll get the out. Oh, um, yeah. But I, I'm still saying it's good. Yeah. Gozen yeah. is bad. Gozen, they're mainly just Earth. So they don't really... And Ishizu stuff is Earth. So the, the uh, Earth part is kind of terrible. So let's do this. Because like, Gozen, does, like, Gozen does almost nothing. They can play They can play Gozen themselves. And finally, D barrier. Yeah, D barrier is uh, pretty solid, I would say, because they can't access their synchro. You call synchro on this matchup, okay? And then GG. Uh, yeah, synchro, and they don't get to go into their beast. It's not completely GG though, because like their main interaction isn't essentially coming from the extra deck. They come from the stink bug, which skips the battle phase. It comes from the uh, the vein, which like negates spells and traps, and also comes from the uh, the last one here, which is the uh, the, the, the sun the sunflower. Which is like, uh, like solemn strike or whatever, negate monster effects. They have all of that stuff. Oh no, my thing just popped noise. But anyways, yeah, that's it's good because you don't have to deal with the big power plays. It stops stuff like you know, Baron. I think the scariest monster is probably Chen Ying, because yo, you don't want to see any Ishizu player with a Chen Ying on board. They will. Kill your graveyard. They're killing three cards out of your graveyard. They're killing a card on your field. What are you doing? Like, actually, no. They're killing four cards out of your graveyard because like Chen Ying itself will also take another card out. So it's it's hitting some pretty big players and Naturia Beast. And even if they preemptively make a beast, like you can still use Deep Air to turn off the Naturia Beast to just like make an odd chain for them because for them to lose when they activate their spell card, you chain Deep Air just in case you do get a turn four or whatever it is. So this is kind of the rundown. I would say this is it. Yeah, that's solid. Dude, we just did an amazing job there. If you're going if you're playing this meta and want to take this meta seriously, look at this guide. Bookmark it. Look through this. And if those extra slots you have, the maybe three slots, four slots, whatever, insert these. Any ones that are searchable in your deck, play them. Pendulum players, that's the field spells, Seeker Village, Mannequin Cat, level two, uh, and Anubis, etc. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys got this far, make sure to smash the subscribe button. Make sure to go check out MSC.tv. Tombox is the GOAT. He's a Yu-Gi-Oh! design architect, baby. <laughs> Make sure to go show him some love on his channel. Also, go check out the link below. Check out Elestrals. I love the game. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. Any last words you'd like to say, Tom? Uh, no, that's it. Check out MST.TV. You know, and thank you, Trip, for having me, of course. And, and part three. Part three. Part three on Tom's channel. So go you subscribe do and don't miss it. Because part three, we're doing a go second guide. Oh, that's right. Right. And even if you missed part one, also go on channel and check out part one. So you could be Hand fully traps. equipped for part three. We did hand shot for part one. Part three is go second. 
So we'll see you guys in that video. Peace. From the highest peaks to the darkest forest and the deepest oceans, discover the enchanted mythical creatures known as Elestrals. Wield the power of the gods and elemental spirits. Clash for victory. Ascend to immortality. Elestrals Card Game, available now on Kickstarter.